and we are back on the dance floor, everyone. The Unlaced Podcast. I'm excited for today. It's a big episode. It's good, Braden, to have three models on the couch, finally. <laughs> I feel, feel in elite company, as per usually my own environment. But two of my friends, Anthony Topic and Kieran Stott. Boys, it's a pleasure to have you on. Pleasure Thanks for having us, bro. Hey, you guys are just like pop stars in your own right, in your own field. So I feel uh, I'm maybe, very honoured. Maybe me, not him. <laughs> Topic, you copy me with everything, bro. Yeah, I've, I've been asking to that. get me a blue tick for like two years. Is now. Can oh, sure. Well, how do you get that? I got two of them. You Don't got two of them. Yeah, but what? <laughs> how is he going to get you that? Gonna, you got a right hand man, someone internal. Yeah, I was supposed to have a couple of hooks. It just hasn't gone through yet. <laughs> oh, well. I think the email went to spam, so I'm not too sure. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Now, we actually met. Uh, I don't know how long ago was it? Two months ago? Yeah, it would have been a couple months. Played ago. in an exhibition soccer game. Which fuck? You guys actually were quite good. You guys Bro, knew. I didn't kick the ball you. in probably about eight nine years since I broke my leg. Yeah, I was having the time of my life. Yeah, out it there. was so fun though. It eh? was fun as man. Yeah, the deal. the sport. We spoke about uh, the week after. I think I had Fahid on, who was on our team, and we we're just talking about how competitive he is and yeah. like. How he started like having like me and him had like a fight in the game because I didn't pass him the ball. I remember yeah. saying that. And then, and well, then, was, it, was that a Zidane looking fella? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the bro. guy in the yeah. middle, the angry guy. Bro. And then I he was, was like, like, it's a charity match, bro. Yeah, Relax, bro. He, he, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't nah, come off once. Seriously. Yeah. He didn't want to come off. I'm nah. like, Fahid, man. I'm like, everyone... win. Yeah. Like, we, we, we all do, but it's yeah. a charity match. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of good having him on the team because he was doing all the running. Yeah, yeah. I was not fit for that. I think it was good, bro. 5 a.m. that morning. I was sore for like a week and a half. Yeah, I was fucked after it as well. Oh, man. Ran that much in so long. Yeah, it's a big field too. Huge. Fuck, that was yeah. a big pitch. Yeah, that's at Hume City. They they've always had a big pitch. Yeah, yeah I think it's their advantage. But I yeah. so I didn't know you had a football background. Like you actually. Yeah, I wanted, wanted to, to be a footballer. Yeah, I wanted to take it pretty seriously when I was a kid, and um, yeah, kind of retired at like nineteen. So Fuck, I didn't man. go all the way where retirees from the sport. Definitely, you know, too yeah. many injuries. But this is like a broken record on this yeah. podcast. Just failed footballers, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Fucking, that's literally my story for like the first ten episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. That's good. Someone else has it. We yeah. can wish had that in common. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of good because you see a lot of soccer players like switch into boxing and stuff now because footwork does matter in boxing and yeah you know studies obviously switched over i'm waiting for you to switch over as well oh, JG. Fuck, mate. i was telling study before i was i was i was keen on boxing boxing the boxing the pads and the yeah um the bags mate that's good fun until you get smacked in the face by someone else and you're like fuck <laughs> this bro this is a hard sport it's the number one hardest sport in the world bro. i think i think by far which we're going to go into today but did you yeah. play football back in the uk or you've been here no, for a while play. yeah i played here when i moved to perth I didn't I realize he's been here like, for like yeah. fucking almost 20 he years. He just has lost the accent. Played with um, Adam Taggart and that. Did you? Yeah. I played with Tag. Tags was my yeah. teammate. I played like just indoor and that with him. Oh, so did you grow up in Perth? Yeah, I grew up in Perth. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. I can't believe yeah, June to look massive, bro. Yeah, June. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he's got an Aussie accent. He's just holding it off for us. You know? Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, man, it's so big. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Adelaide's <laughs> podcast. Let's go. Oh, wow. Wow. That is fucking good. That's me doing impression of you. That is good. <laughs> so you lot sound to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Now, you, how did you boys meet? Through boxing, through the gym, or you slid in my DMs, didn't it? And then wow. did I? Yeah, asked me to come do a bit of boxing and that. Oh yeah, I did too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you? Oh right. So yeah. what are you? You like this celeb promoter? Celeb like, matchmaker. You like the Jake Paul of Australia? I'll, if you got a blue tick, I'll slide straight into those. No DMs, way. Man. Yeah. Man, I said hello to him at Michael's Rafa's fight in like the whatever the VIP section we're in, and like said hello within five seconds. Like, oh, you got a, what are you doing in September? I'm like, oh, got a card, man. Celebrity card. Like, you want to fight? I'm like, fucking hell, man. Yeah. <laughs> Almost walked away, putting myself in the ring. I'm, I'm like, just came over to say hello. I'm straight over there. Yeah. Straight onto it. Yeah, right? he was like had the fucking, the ink was almost dry before I'd even left. I'm like, <laughs> fucking scary, bro. You got to be persistent with it, bro. That's you know? crazy. So how did you like channel into this space? How to, into this industry really feel well, a footballer? You know, I, was, I wanted to have a couple of fights after I quit playing soccer and um, yeah, I pretty much started these celebrity events and jumped on the main card for our first celebrity show in 2018. And then um, yeah, it's just gone uphill from there. Fuck me. So... By the way, we haven't even introduced you. Oh dog. yeah, yeah. This is my dog, Lacey, yeah. Lacey Lou Freebush. <laughs> Brad, this is a first in the in the van, eh? Look who's. <laughs> yeah, hey. literally. There we go, Lacey. There yes, go. that's right. Now right that's pretty cool. So, did you did you initially fight? Do you still fight? Because you um, do mainly training well, and promoting. Now, you know, right? I, st I still might have a fight. You know, later in a year or next year or something like that. There's a couple of opportunities happening overseas at the moment that. 
we're currently in talks with, um, mm. but I do need a bit of a following before I jump on it. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's why you're based with him then. Yeah. That's why yeah. we're on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get a bit more followers. Let's be honest. The views are coming from Scotty couple... this episode. We're yeah. all just a collateral. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Talk about him. Fine. Well, I'm, Ask I'll, him a question. I'll take the sympathy <laughs> follows. <Yeah. guys. laughs> I'll take them too. I'm losing them. Yeah. <laughs> but no, let's, let's talk about boxing because I absolutely love boxing. Like yeah. it's been a sport I've watched for so long. And then I actually went in the ring a few years ago and like, as I started training to it, I just loved, it was the first time I actually felt like I was, had like a purpose outside of football because yeah. it was like, you know, Same you, here. if you, yeah. Yeah, you can't like, you can't cheat. Do you know what I mean? No. Like you can't, but for you guys, where did you get the love for boxing? Like what was the drug that you guys got that's made you sort of so interested in obviously working now? <laughs> Mine would have been obviously get, I got asked to do the first like celebrity fight and I was like, yeah, go on, I'll give it a crack. And my, great 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 five times removed uncle was uh john l sullivan which is the last oh no sorry the first heavyweight boxing champion of the world what the f my family tree he's got, on the he's, irish side goes got 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 on his leg on my leg. what the fuck well, never boxed in my life did you what? know that growing up as a kid yeah i knew it oh, but right. i didn't, didn't I, I didn't realize how big he was you know yeah. as such we walked into the gym and like speaking to jake and top and he's like oh you had any boxing experience so like, nah, any family I went, oh, yeah, but from, like, ages ago, and you probably won't have heard of him. And Jake goes, yeah, like, who? I went, oh, like, it's boxer John L. Sullivan. And he went, you, he's like, you're taking the piss. And I went, no fucking what? Way. And he went, bro, and, uh, tell me all, bro, telling me history about him. I went, oh, okay. And he went, are you sure? And I went, yeah, I've got him tattooed <laughs> on me. <like." laughs> no and he was way. like, so you're not messing about? I went, no, well, man. I just, I just heard pedigree at that point. I'm like, get him straight yeah, in there. And then you saw his jab. You're like, that's not bad. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> <It's like laughs> Tommy, no, so I remember being in the ring and they're like, they're like, yeah, boxing's all about transferring your weight. And I was like, yeah, right. And he, he went, wiggled his arms. so you got to like transfer the weight from the front to the back. They're going to went like this. Bro, I, I, literally everyone went like this. Bro, they went, Oh, yeah, don't do that again. Maybe not. <laughs> bro, it's a fucking hard sport. It's it an intimidating sport. sport. If you haven't done it before and you step into the ring around people that are doing it, people will like, that's what must be hard or the atmosphere you have to set in the gym mm. for like beginners to when they come like, and fucking Devin Haney's been here, for example. Yeah. It's like, fuck me. It's, it's, world, it's the only sport where you can train next to a world champion. Yeah, in the same environment. Literally. Like, I don't think you can do it anywhere else. No, you can't no. do it with soccer. You can't do it with, you know, you any don't other go for a kick about really. with Beckham, do you? Yeah. You, know like, I mean? you know what I mean? That's yeah. fucked, isn't it? Yeah. That's, yeah. And that's yeah, one man. of the things that they speak about, like, through the gyms in um, Vegas and Brooklyn. Like, mm. you get normal people training, like, kids off the street training with world champions, like, in the same place. Yeah. It's fucking pretty special. It's such an awesome experience to have, you know. Like, you can, in, in a boxing gym, you'll get people from all sides of the world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and different parts of, you know, what they do in life and all that sort of stuff. And that's what I love about a boxing gym, you know? Yeah. Can you explain the Alice Boxing Gym to us? This is where we're, we're parked outside of Alice Boxing Gym. It's very well known. They do incredible events around Melbourne and showcase obviously cele celebrity fights and obviously more sort of up and coming fighters on the, on their cards. Yeah. How did, like, can you give us a bit of background on this space? Yeah. So we opened up about six years ago um, and uh, my best mate, Jake Ellis, his dad was five-time world uh, champion. Lester Ellis. Lester Ellis. Yeah. Machine, um, bro. He's an absolute machine. There's not going to be another fighter like him ever again. Yeah. Um, and when he was in his prime, he was supposed to fight uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. So they didn't end up making a fight happen because there was some promotional, like. And the Mayweather ducked him. Yeah, Roger Mayweather ducked him as well. The Roger was the trainer, right? Yeah. He passed he, away. He recently passed away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the yeah, uncle. Yeah. 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 That's fine. Oh, yeah, the uncle, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. He was supposed to fight him as well and he dodged him. So. Yeah, it was a big, big talent back in those days, man. And we're just, um, you know, teaching the next gen what he taught us, really. So his sons are like, are like op operating this as well as yes. you guys. So yep. it's like, how many people are in here? There's, there's oh, like fucking eight of you when I walked in. Yeah, there's literally like <laughs> fifteen of us. He's, he's like, he's like, Jakey, man. go have yourself to a drink. Yeah. Just in a meeting. I'm like, what's going on here? Yeah. Fucking five degrees in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bells just, are going off. Lights are on. I'm like, what the fuck is this place, bro? <laughs> Crank on every heater in there. Yeah. You know, and he man. comes out and a dog's biting my ankles. I'm like, bro, this place oh, is <laughs> weird. <laughs> she will, she will bite. She looks nice, but she's a little terrier. Oh, so it's just cute. She'll man. get a little feisty. It's cute. Dad, do you get like? Have you found with boxing like your experiences? It's it's changed people's lives. Like people were either from rough backgrounds or people that don't have anything. Oh, it kind of gives them. To Melbourne, I was full party mode. Yeah, I was out like four days a week, <laughs> not sleeping for four days a week. Fuck it out. No money, no nothing. And they asked me to do it, and I went, Ah, oh, yeah, go on, I'll give it a crack. And then it just, I don't know, just 
got in here, I was like, I'm crap at this. I need to, you know, yeah, turn yeah. my head in, start having a go. Took training seriously, did it all, bro, and just they gave me a job at the gym. It just turned my life. Like, really? Bro, full 180, bro. Mm. That's crazy. Because now you're getting up at what? You're saying you're opening the gym and stuff at times. What bro, time? Oh, 5 a.m., bro, at the gym. 5 a.m. Yeah, you can't it. have nights out be- now. Bed bro. at 8 a.m., yeah. bro. Yeah. Up at 5. That's when you were going to bed a few years it. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two uh, days after. Fucking <laughs> you know I mean? hell, man. So that's pretty good, crazy. Bro. It bro. gives you that bit of discipline as well. Because I was in the army, I had the discipline there. But then. Yeah, boxing, bro, it's the same. You and, need the and discipline. And not many people know that about him. He's a hard worker, man. Like, yeah. he, he, he gets up early, he works hard, um, does everything 110%. And people just don't know that about Stoddy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, they, you know, they watch a TV show and they have a certain perception about someone, but you don't really know that person at all. Bro, it's like, even yeah. when I started working in, then I had to do, like, the women's classes... And obviously been on TV and I was just labelled this narcissist, blah, blah, oh, whatever. They, was there, where was that? What Bro, was that like with them? And the women, fucking, and then they were thinking, prick. we've seen you on TV, yeah. you're a dickhead, you oh, know what I mean? Oh my God. Yeah. And then, bro, now they're like, yeah, when we, before we first like trained with we thought, oh, I'm not training with him. But when they went, but you totally different to what comes across on telly. And I went, no, oh, I went, everyone is. I went, yeah. so many, I went, it happens to so many people. I just don't let it bother me anymore. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah, that's actually a true point because I, I actually didn't know it until I've, obviously we do our research here on this show. Yeah. But extensive. Fuck, yeah, extensive. <laughs> <laughs> extensive, man. I found a lot about this guy. I went through, some, I went through some dark tunnels to find stuff on our mate over here. He's <laughs> the curveball is the dog. That's what yeah. I didn't expect. But no, that's true because you kind of got branded like a bit of like this um, – I don't know how they, how they would they positioned it. It gave it. I wasn't. I'm not sure if it's the word narcissistic or it was like selfish or something. They they tagged you on this YouTube clip, and I was like, "Fuck, that's pretty stiff, man." Like, because mm. I was like, I wanted to ask you, like, how scripted are some of those shows that you've been on in the past? Like, I feel like they had to u- label someone something to get views. Yeah, do you know yeah what I, I mean, would as say well? they don't really sc- like script anything, but like obviously you get filled with grog and you do all that stuff, <laughs> and then they'll go. It started oh, pretty early, didn't it? Oh, bro, 11 a.m. bar was open. I had breakfast, first one to the bar. I'm there, double rum and coke, thanks. Yeah. Oh, so you would drink from 11 and then what? Bro, you'd shoot all day? We'd shoot, bro, non-stop. The cameras were always on. So you were pissed. I was, bro, smashed. And then you do like the little one-on-one interviews. And I'd just be sat there, some side really that hot in this room, but I'd just fall asleep. And they go, hell. you got to go out. You're not allowed to drink anymore. And then I'd go to one of the girls who didn't drink. I was like, hey. Cass, so you don't drink, yeah? And she went, now, nah, you want to go to the bar and get me some drinks? She's <laughs> oh. like, yeah, no problem. And oh, got my some. God. It's bad, bro. That is unbelievable. Yeah. Now, for, can we just talk before we go, because I want to go into that quite deeply, actually, but um, one of my favorite fighters in the world, which you were talking about before, is Devin Haney, yeah. who's fighting George Campos, which by the time this comes out, we'll know who won. Yeah. But obviously, prior to this fight, he's been utilizing the Alice Gym, which you missed. I missed you in all Bali, of it, bro. I can burn you in. Which so how did that how did that happen? I was going to give him a touch up as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you know in my great great great. I was going to him on day three, but <laughs> Devin Haney pulled out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll run with that. So I went to Bali. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have to go to Bali. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we work with a lot of international promoters and, and gyms around the world and stuff like that. And the opportunity came across on my desk, and um, yeah, I heard about it and. Took it on straight away, man. Fuck, man. Definitely that's... want him in the gym for a couple of weeks. Bro, yeah. Have you? Has anyone been, like, giving you shit? Because, like, everyone, like, it's Australia versus Devin Haney? Or nah, has, well, no, has everyone been kind of, like, just mad? you know, we, we do know George Cambosis as well. Like, we're obviously good friends with everyone here in Australia. But um, I did put it past him and said, look, if you've got a problem with it, I just won't have him in the gym. And he goes, mate, no, it's all good. Like, I want him to make it to the fight and get him in there and do whatever you can to get him in there because... Got a feeling he's going to pull out. I'm like, all right, no worries, I'll take it. No way. What? So how? What, how was he? Like, what was he like? What was his? What, oh, what was he, unique about him in a sense from your eyes? Um, just his natural athleticism. You know, like very silky, um, very hard worker. He doesn't drink. Doesn't. You know, obviously at that level you can't do none of that sort of stuff. But yeah, just how they operate. You know, you Different. can you can tell Yo Yo Judah, who's Zab Judah's dad. Um, is he his trainer? What is he? Yeah, he is his trainer while he's in Australia because. Bill Haney couldn't make it down. Yeah. Um, Why was that? Is there something wrong with it? Did, did something happen? Yeah, I think. Because I saw Cambosis like fucking go into town on him yeah, in the I, press I, conference. But well, in Australia, we're amazing. super we're super tight at the customs. So if you've got a history with anything. Oh, so he's got, he's got a criminal background or something. Yeah, like that. I think there's something some, like that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, okay. And he just couldn't make it down because we are very 
Fuck, you know? that's a big thing because he's at every he's in every fight. Like yeah. he's in every corner. His presence is felt in all of Devin 100%. Haney's fucking fights, man. Your, your corner's probably the most, as you know now, like it's the most important thing yeah. in the fight, you know, because yeah. they, they are your eyes and ears and they can see things that you can't. So Fuck, he's kind of put all his, um, you know, I guess efforts into Yol Judah now and Yol Judah's got to do the same back to him. But I don't know how much training they've had prior to this. Did fight. he look? Did he look sharp and shit here? Like yeah. He oh like, my god. So because he would have been pretty cruisy when he came. I should. Yeah. He would. He would have done, done his back. big twelve round spars before he got here, um, and he's done a few rounds with you know our fighters like Tommy Fitzgerald, who's one of the trainers at the gym, um, Matt Abdullahs, and um, one of the Bella boys as well, Ibi Bella. Okay. Um, so he's done some really good rounds with some of our top level fighters, Kane Clark as well from Suff Boxing. Yeah. Um, which are some of our best Australian fighters. And yeah, he was looking good. Fuck, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, we're going to have, because this is going to come out next week. So after the fight, we're going to have a bit of an oracle moment here. We're going to have a, we're going to have a prediction. Yeah. Ooh. So let's go around the circle. Let's I go around the Can I fence it on this one? Because yeah. I like them both. <laughs> yeah, well, you're in a tough position. <laughs> I understand. It's, like, well, it's coming out after the fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I'll right. say what I want. Let's see, we'll call it the three models. We'll call it the triangles. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, seriously, who do you, let's go with you, Study. Who do you think... Devin Haney, Cambosis, how, when does it finish? Does it go to decision? Oh, like, I've watched some of uh, Haney's fights, like, obviously against Linares and stuff like that, where, you know, he, he did get rocked. He didn't look too great against him. Um, and then Cambosis, I backed him against Lopez, but no did one. Did you really? Yeah, but I'm, I won so much money. Did you? Won. Fuck. I can't remember, but I just, I yeah, cashed out on that one. Did you, what, you had it just him winning or did you had it going to a decision? No, I just had him winning. Okay. Yeah, and just put a bit of coin on. Cause, That's big because, you know, for people who didn't, Lopez never lost before that, I yeah, don't think. Nah, he hadn't lost, had he? No. Nah, nah, yeah, so nah. it was his first. And bold, everyone yeah. just thought he was going to get bold, bro. And I, I might have chucked a bit on, like, Cambos has gone in 60 seconds, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that was just a bit of fun, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, security bet. Yeah, 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 that's a, right. a blanket bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You yeah. in the house. Yeah, so, look, my heart says Cambosis. My head says Haney, but on this one, bro, I'm it's in Australia. He's got all the belts. He ain't going to want to give them up easy. He's going like, He's going out on his shield. I'm going to go Cambosis. Fuck, good mm. call. How, how does he do it in your decision? In your points. Mind? Points. Yeah, yeah. points. What about you? Yeah, well, ne I don't think either of them are, like, knockout artists. Obviously, Devin Haney's had, like, 13 knockouts. Um, I can't remember how many Georges had, but they're, they're super sharp. They've got very similar attributes and stuff like that. They kind of get behind the left shoulder, shoulder roll and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's going to be a tactical battle. But, um, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Georgie here, man. Wow. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to draw. You're going to draw? Yeah. I think I think guess I think um because Devin Haney's so scrappy, bro. Like he wins scrappy fights. Mm. Like sometimes doesn't look amazing. So unless Cambosis fights the fucking fight of a lifetime. Well, if he fights like he did against Lopez. Yeah, that's that's but I haven't watched enough Cambosis to like, that. that fight was unbelievable. You know what amazed me about that fight was his fitness. Bro, like, I don't know if he's oh, just a bouncy Cambosis guy, but his like conditioning is next up, bro. He got dropped in round ten. Then the championship rounds come back, bro, and belted him. Yeah, around yeah. eleven and twelve. Because yeah. you know why I appreciate? Because I I did a boxing fight once, and I thought I was fit, and then I went into the actual fight, and I'd done like twelve rounds of sparring and all that shit, and like thirty seconds in, bro, I was like gassed. I was like fucking, what the fuck is going on? Like, yeah, man, breathing heavy. And then I watched him, and he was like always on his tiptoes, bouncing and moving, and I'm like, bro, this guy must be so fit. You no, know, it's funny. Like when I do these celebrity fights, we make him three ones. And then every time you tell these guys it's three ones, they're like, oh, let's do three twos. Like, yeah, I want to do a full fight. I'm like, believe me, you don't so understand hard, how bro. hard that one minute round is at the start. You know, yeah. and they're gasped by the first round. Yeah. The second round, they've got nothing left. You know what I mean? So, Fuck me, man. There is levels to this stuff. And, you know, back in the day when Lester was fighting, he was doing 15 rounds yeah. at three minutes. Yeah. You know, obviously, Even Barry Michael did the last 15 round fight that yeah. ever was. Fuck yeah. me, man. That's insane. It's 45 bro. minutes in the ring trying to kill each other. <laughs> no, no wonder there's, so each other. Yeah, no <laughs> one there's pro problems with some of these fights back oh, in the day. Yeah. They were in there for so long, just yeah. getting hit. And that's obviously why they made it 12 because yeah. it's obviously very unsafe. You know. Yeah. Um, do you think do you think boxing's changing in Australia now? Like with the Cambosis, even Zarafa might have a world world title fight. Even just like naturally the celebrity fights, like Paul Gallen, yeah. we spoke of before, like it's actually getting viewership. Mm. Do you think it's taken a turn? Because it was kind of not really given as much credit as it was like the last sort of 10 years, I feel. Yeah, definitely. And I think characters like Logan Paul, Jake Paul bring it yeah. to the scene now and yeah. them doing it properly and, and being big ambassadors for the sport. 
Um, they obviously bring, again, like study, they, they bring big followings and that's what this sport needs. You know, yeah. it needs more general population coming to it. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just got massive traction at the moment, man. But they're fucking, Marvel's a bit of a hoodoo stadium for Aussie fight. Whitaker, he got, he got done by Adesanya there. Yeah. Fucking hope that doesn't happen. It'll be yeah. heartbreak, man. Because if Cambosis wins this, who, who would he, who would he, Lom- next they're fight? talking Lomachenko. Lomachenko. Yeah, but they've if if Cambosis loses, they've got a rematch clause. Okay. So he can fight. But he'll fight him. in Vegas probably. I yeah. saw on the thing he said, he's like, fuck the rematch clause, don't need it. Nah, don't he's, it. He's, Surely he's, he's got one in place. He's got one in place. He's the best. He's one of the best fighters I've ever seen in like press conferences. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, I, the, That sort of thing that shocked me against Lopez was that I was like, this guy's not scared of him. Like, and I know Cambosis hadn't lost either, but I was like, still, you know, and you can kind of see... Because yeah. that's what I watch. I just watch like, because I'd be like fucking shitting myself. I'd be like, bro, this cunt's going to fucking kill me. Mm. But he's there like, he just wasn't scared. He was like in his backyard. I think his last like how many fights have been overseas as well. So yeah. he's like, man, he's coming tra- home. Yeah, this is the first, man. like Devin Haney's, this isn't, you're not special. I've been doing nah. this for fucking And he, he went to fight. Madison Square Garden to fight the last fight against Lopez. And that's Lopez's hometown. Yeah. And he was getting booed as soon as he walked in, bro. And tough just cheered as a champion when he walked yeah. out. That's a tough <laughs> motherfucker, eh? Yeah, dude. You need to be mentally fit for that, dude. Oh man. Well, let's go on to the um let's go on to the photogenic scene. Let's talk yeah. about the modeling aspect. So obviously good looking lads here. Yeah. Let's so the, talk Cheers, to me man. about the international modeling industry. I know you've done that. Oh. Stoddy, you seem to be a like well, a yeah, you did it for board. shoes and balaclavas. <laughs> I've got nice hair. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I should have done more research there. It probably was yeah, ads like this. <laughs> I'll just be doing pen commercials. You know, bro. Right? What the fuck is that industry like, man? I've never, yeah, I've never spoke to anyone about it's it. It's interesting. Obviously, coming from like obviously a soccer background and a boxing background, it's very, um, it's very different, you know. And I had to adapt to it pretty quickly. And, um, you know, I did learn a lot from the industry. And I was a kid who grew up in a pretty rough area, so. Initially, when I when I got into it, you know, my dad bagged me and said, what are you doing it for? Yeah. And, you know, get a real job and yeah. all this other stuff. And then I started making a living out of it, bro. I was, I was, I was flying overseas and stuff like that. And it was pretty hell. big campaigns. Right? Where, were you, where were you going? Uh, mainly to Europe. And then as soon as I got like my tear sheets, which, which is like your campaign shots, um, I got a visa and started working in LA. Jesus Christ. Bro, you got to tell them the story about how you walk shit through Calvin Klein's house. Oh, God. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, let's go. You, you <laughs> One, A, you went to Calvin Klein's house, and two, you walk shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather forget this moment, but they ended up loving me at the end of it, and I shot with Alessandra Ambrosio's uh, photographer after it as well. So it wasn't too bad, but yeah, I um, my mate dropped me off, and where he dropped me off, there was obviously dirt next to the curb, and I've stepped on that dirt. Walked in, thought my shoes were clean, and I was just walking through his whole house with dirty shoes. What? How did you even get to Calvin Klein's house? Like, how the uh, fuck does so that happen? One of my friends is really good friends with him, and um, so yeah, he said, connect. yeah, let's let's go for. Oh, he's got one dinner. of his best mates in LA, Bieber's hairdresser, and that. Yeah, Jesus. he's got all the connects. What are you doing bro? here, bro? He's got all the connects. Like COVID. No, I can't COVID. wait. I can't wait to leave. Now it makes sense. I thought it was the other way Trying around. Well, it's not me getting his clout. Now he's getting mine. You know? <laughs> there we go. You know? Fuck, that's pretty surreal, man. So yeah. you're like real deal in that space. Like you yeah, have... yeah, yeah. So through the industry in fashion, you meet you know all sorts of celebrities and stuff like that. So you know you go to venues and and functions and stuff like that and. Yeah, you just see some really big names. You're like, oh, you, sometimes you need to pinch yourself and be like, oh shit, like Bieber's there, or you know what I mean? I saw James Harden at one of these other venues, and like, what the fuck? I'm just mixing bro. in with those guys, and like, I don't deserve to be here. You do know? you do you still do it, or you stop doing it now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, I'm picking my jobs, you know. So okay. I work with um, Bally pretty closely now, Calibre. Yep. Um, so like I just pick, brands. Yeah, I just pick what I kind of want to do. You know? Do you have you guys copped like any shit for that? Because like I feel like there's a natural. I don't know if it's just an Australian thing, but like a stigma, like a male stigma when other males being like vulnerable or feminine with like you know doing modelling or catwalking and stuff. When it's fucking like it is what it is. You know, you're making money. It's not. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Have you guys like copped that at all? Has that ever been like a thing that's played on your mind or not really? Mm, not really, man. Not really. I think. Um yeah, I think the the industry kind of welcomes everyone. So yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a it's, it's a lovely industry, and at the end of the day, it started me. And without finding these guys and meeting new people in the industry, I wouldn't have met people like Study and, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. yeah, what about you? Have you done much? You, I'm sure you've. No, nah, I've done a bit, but not on it. It probably is. It's like 
done runway walks in like Milan and shit. Bro, bro pump this up, man. Bro, what what he's are we using? Humble. <laughs> humble as fuck. He's just showing me these videos. <laughs> and I, was, I saw these suits that he was reading on Instagram. I went, they're nice. And he went, oh, yeah. So, do you, want, do you want to watch it? I went, watch what? Wow. He went, well, bro, like Roberto Cavalli, fucking runways in Milan just. Look in the nines, bro. bro just remember, strutting I'm, it. I'm, I'm 30 now, Jakey. This is like five, six years. Yeah, ago, but that's you know? still. Yeah, but is that is five that, is years ago? Is that long ago, bro? Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah seriously, we've been in COVID for like yeah. three. So oh, yeah. last year, forgot so, about that. Yeah. Fuck me. So who would be like the most famous person you've either modelled with or for? Um, well, I worked for Jimmy Choo in like 2017. <laughs> That's what I'm just saying, dropping bro. times here, bro. <laughs> what and, the um, fuck? I didn't. I, I I got the call the day after I'd done the casting for it, and. Um, you know, I got the full call sheet and stuff and it said CD on like the main um, person that was in the shot with me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, CD? Who's CD? Why wouldn't they put their full name there? And it was Cara Delvain. Oh my God. And I was She's like, massive, Oh hey? my God, I'm nervous, man. So you modelled with her? Yeah, we'd done a scene together. She's so hot, bro. Yeah, she's gorgeous, yeah. man. She's a bit like loose as well, isn't she? She seems like a bit of a yeah, quirky Yeah, she, she was smoking like... darts and stuff. <laughs> Midway through the shot and, you know, needed a jacket because it was cold. But we were shooting from like 7 a.m. to like 7 p.m. And um, yeah, she had her own like leg model and stuff. So she only worked one day and then another lady was doing her leg shots because wow. they were selling the shoes. It's like a massive industry, man. I've got yeah. no idea about that space, but it fascinates me. It's a fascinating industry, man. Yeah. And I yeah. love I love being a part of it. Boxing and fashion, they're my two things, What a man. combo. Yeah, it's mm. a good combination. Yeah, it's like because you're feminine, but then it's like I'll fuck you up too if yeah. you fucking tell me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You know, <laughs> so I'd, never, I'd never get anyone getting rude to me in a fashion <laughs> yeah. world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's mad, bro. Yeah. Now, it's um for, for me, what I, what I loved, one of the things I love about you, Stoddy, is that you're pretty like evidently you are who you are, so you don't really come with any bullshit. And obviously the TV shows where, like most, including myself, got to know you. Yeah, okay, yeah. What was the – so you've been here actually. Let's go. You're, you're initially from Manchester, aren't you? Yep. Which from the accent is – Remarkable how it's still here because I was like, Oh, when did you move here? Like, assuming it was recently, I was like, like nah, 17, 17 years ago. My, da 17 bro, my dad years. sounds like Peter Kay, like, I was never losing it. Peter Kay's the greatest comedian of all time, bro. Garlic bread, garlic bread <laughs> <laughs> from Braden. the future, Jerry. I've <laughs> tasted it, <laughs> bro. I'm one of my like bucket lists is to see him live because oh, he yeah. just did a show again. And he's like the equivalent of Carl Barron in okay. the UK, yeah, like, yeah. Bro, just he's summed great. up sounds UK familiar. humor, yeah. And like, he's man, he's a fucking genius, oh, he's an absolute genius. Like yeah. Phoenix Knights because he's, well. he's from Bolton. Yeah, that's what. Uh, Bolton's from, where I'm born. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Bolton, Albert Halls, and that's he, loves, J he loves JJ Okocha. JJ Okocha, <laughs> my favorite player in the world. Yeah, yeah. God. Yeah, so nice days. Yeah. Stays. yeah. Now, the this is one of the interesting things we touched on. It is the military aspect to your background. Mm. Yeah. So what? How, what made you want to go into that so, space? How old were you? I went to school over here, and it just felt like a holiday. So I got the worst grades ever, and I was just partying, doing what I wanted to. Like learning how to surf and stuff, living in Perth, thought this is great, played football, dropped out of school. Uh, my dad went, well, what are you good at? And I went, well, I'm good at PE and I'm, <laughs> I'm good at woodwork. He went, all right, you can be a chippy. I went, no problem. So signed up to be a chippy, did my apprenticeship. After my apprenticeship, I um, got signed on the day, like, here's your certs, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Went straight from there, from work, straight to the um, DFR. Went into Defence Force recruiting and went, oh, I want to join up. So I always wanted to do it. And my dad went, well, you've got to get a trade behind you first before you do it. So you had to tick that box before yeah. you could go. And then when signed up and what do you want to do? I went, oh, I just want to be a rifleman. And they went, you've got all these other jobs you can pick from. I went, no, nah, I want to be a rifleman. Went, That's what I want to Wait, do. Wait, explain what a rifleman does. Like... Right, well, if you get deployed, you're like the frontline soldier. You're Fucking in the firefight, you know what I mean? Jesus. But I never got deployed because I broke my leg and then got kicked out of the army. So, so how long, <laughs> How long? Well, how did, so, but you were a rifleman, so you did yeah. the training. So I did like... the training, did it all, <clears throat> got posted up in Darwin, uh, lived in Darwin for, what, Six years, seven years or something. So you're fucking like proper, man. Mm. Pro oh, so I assume, but I don't know if you're one of the lucky ones, but to not get deployed, I would assume I mean, that's lucky, but you probably would have wanted right, to. Mind you being a football player and then just sitting on the bench. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. For you, you know, you'd probably want to be on the oh, football. Oh, bro, the, the, the only reason that you joined to be, <coughs> like, if you want to be a rifleman is because you want to you go and do it. You, know, you want to yeah. do your job. So I joined, did all the training, passed everything. And then, yeah, when I broke my leg, got... Dream shattered, like that was it, game over. Like, I even wanted to try for SAS or commandos and just give it a shot. If I didn't get in, I didn't get in. But yeah. always wanted to just, well, if I want to be a rifleman, I want to be the best rifleman that you can be. I want to be, you know, SAS. I want to be yeah. 
that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, like dream, dreams were shattered, bro. I played a game of football against some engineers and they shattered my leg and that was it. Game over. And they got rid of you. No, yeah. no love. I couldn't do my job anymore. Oh, they went, oh, well, you can stay in the army and be a, like a desk, desk jockey. Oh, and I went, not a chance. I ain't <laughs> sitting on a computer. So then left the army, started dancing in a gay bar, then worked in a cocktail bar. What, dancing in a gay bar? What were you doing there? Like just to being a, like a dancer? Oh, bro, found, full found a video go, go <laughs> dancing, bro. Like dancing, choreographed with like drag queens and everything, bro. You can't bro. dance, bro. You've got two left feet. I, what, hey, if I was getting paid a mint, it wasn't us. <laughs> really? Yeah. What, did, did someone recruit you or you were just like... Nah, oh, just because I, I did like topless waiting in another bar. And then right. they were like, oh, do you want to come do this? And I went, yeah, I'll give it a crack. Fucking hell, but, bro, man. the best best thing ever. I, I, I admit, I can't dance. I yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm white. I ain't got no rhythm. <laughs> I dance to the lyrics and not the beat. I'm one of yeah, them people, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But bro, it was so much fun. Like, I did it for like nearly two years or something. What and then just worked in a cocktail bro. bar. And then my mate went, hey, bro, there's this thing on Facebook. You should apply for it. I went, what is it? He went, the batch. I went, bro, no one from Darwin gets on these TV shows. Yeah, like, valid no point. One. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone yeah. from non And he's like, yeah, but... And then, bro, just got drunk, got stoned. And I went... Yeah, I'm going to apply. Bro, did this video, just taking the piss, not thinking, phone call the day after. Oh, we're going to fly down to Melbourne, come do this interview. I went, all right then. And then that was it, bro, from there, then ended up getting on the show. Oh my God. Well, let's just, fuck. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? What about breaking a leg to go dancing in a gay bar? It's like front line to that. <laughs> bro, I can't keep up with this guy. Oh, you but, stink, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Well, right. get her out of the car. Oh, God, what so about, um? How can you explain to me how hard the training was? Like, is it hard to so be a, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it was hard. Like, mentally what's tough about it? Um, bro, like, the worst thing for me, because I was I'm always, like skinny, I'm a small lad, was the um, pack marching. Right. So you go on like stomps where you've just got like 30, 40 kilos worth of weight in a pack and like your uh, body armor, your rifle, and you, bro, you're walking for like 15 kilometers. You know what I mean? You just, and you just got to walk. <laughs> it's just Fuck, like... man. Just you and your mind. Bro, yeah, but you're with everyone else and you're looking at your mates and one of my mates, bro, used to sweat that bad and he was a big lad and he'd be hating it just because of how like, sweaty you'd be and I'd be like, at least I ain't... That bad, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, you yeah. get a bit of morale off each other. Right. You can, from like the first kilometer in, people are like, oh, fucking hate this, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it was funny. Because you hear all these stories of like the military in America, how hard it is to be like a SEAL and stuff like that. Is it anything like that here to be like... Oh, it, I mean, it would be for, yeah, for your, yeah, your SAS or your commandos. Like yeah. it would be... But for Rafferman, it was hard, but it wasn't like I didn't think, oh, I can't do this, I'm going to quit. Right. And you okay. do like one of them... Mm. The exercises you do is like food and sleep deprivation for like a week. So you get like minimal sleep and minimal food. And then as you're like digging, you got to dig these pits, which are like for overhead protection from bloody artillery and whatnot. Jeez. So as you're digging the pits and you're like hallucinating and the like your staff are like taking the piss out of you. You know what I mean? So they got us all and they went, oh, you can come get some food. Give us them little like white polystyrene cups. And said they were giving us soup and just put stones in it. And we all like confused when it was both and they went, eat it. And everyone went, stones. Like, well, <laughs> we've not eaten for two days. <laughs> and then, but they obviously rewarded us. They were just taking the piss. Oh that, my how God, react. the mental fucking game. Yes. Right? Yeah, I thought it would have been a test. Like maybe it's a cake <laughs> or something. Bro, and then <laughs> if you like, lose my teeth. Yeah, if you, you'd be, I can't remember, you'd put like your sentries out. And when you go there, you're just lying down with your like gun and you just go in. I've got to stay awake here. Then some people, bro, like they'd get the bayonets, put it down, and have the bayonet rest on the chin just to keep them awake. If you fell asleep, bro, and they'd, they'd like they'd come over, take you a weapon, and then everyone's in trouble. You know what oh I mean? my god! So the punishment was like group punishment. Oh, bro, if someone fucked always up. group punishment, bro. It wasn't never single, always group. Jesus, man. that's no, that's why yeah. he's got the discipline then that you talked mm. about that background. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy because did they really promote that when you were on the bachelorette the first time? No, nah, not really. Because <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it was just like in your bio, like your your age, name, and ex military. Yeah, I think it was something like that. And then I can't nothing. Remember. And then they just made you out to be this like crazy sort of exotic Englishman. Uh, a guy yeah. who's gonna go fight for the country <clears throat> and save, you know. Yeah, they don't mention that lives. Nah. But the best it. is so the the best about the show for me was the like your introduction <laughs> when you come in in like this red velvet suit, bro, and you're like you're not even near the girl. You're like you look fucking dynamite, <laughs> and she's there like. Oh. <laughs> Who yeah. the fuck is this cunt? <laughs> yeah. She's like, where's that cunt from? She can't even see him yet. Bro, so, because I don't watch reality TV. Right. At all. And I remember once everyone 
was sat there like in the suits like before you get driven in the limo to go there or whatever and everyone's just got a present and got this and that and I was just like what are you all doing with them and they went oh I brought this because of this and I've got a like my mate Tim got a sunflowers as my favourite flower other dudes are going I'm pulling up on a motorbike I'm doing this and what are you doing I went nothing I wasn't just, <laughs> I didn't know I was meant to do something and everyone's like you're going home straight away and I was like Oh, you kidding? <laughs> I was like, so I didn't have a oh, present. So you didn't, you were like rattled by that. I didn't oh, know, bro, I didn't realize I was, people had to do that. I thought you just walk on normal. Yeah, no, just that's be yourself. What I thought. I thought you just walked in. I didn't realize everyone had to have something. Oh, so I'm just, I'm thinking, oh, I'm definitely going. I'm the only person here who's not brought anything. Fucking not, hell. But they didn't, I know they didn't show it, but because I didn't get anything, then once we got in there, I had a few drinks and I got pissed that quick, Relax. bro. Before people were even coming in, they were like, yep. Yeah, Guy in the red suit cut off from the bar, like not just. Oh, really? Bro, you can't got a rep in there. You and that guy can't, can't, can't handle my drink, bro. Oh, really? I'm shocking with oh, drinks. I've like three, four drinks, and I'm smashed. Oh no way! Anyway, I was like, oh, I need to need to do something memorable here because yeah, you know, she's everyone else had brought her something, so I just grabbed this thing off the mantelpiece. It was like this plane, and I just walked over to her, and went. Put it in a box. <laughs> I was like, give her it as a present and just had a bit of a chat with her. And she went, "Where do you get that from?" Went, I didn't. I know I said I'm a chippy. I know it's made out of wood, but I just grabbed it off the mantelpiece and she just found it funny as. So it must have kept me in. Or something. How was that? How was that whole experience for you? Was it because oh, obviously you caught one, a lot of attention from that? Yeah, the first one was mad. It was crazy. But yeah. then when that come out and just my world, you know, turned upside down. Bro, yeah. I was getting flown like business class here, like. Getting all like the best spots, VIP this, like going on these boat parties. And I went, bro, this is sick. Fucking living like life. a bro, mm. living like a rock star, like loving life. But I just thought I was on top of the world and yeah. just thought, hey, any women, any just this. Just riding just, the fucking wave, yeah. bro. Just, just, just oh, not I'd there. Be, I'd be the delirious, exact fucking same. Just delirious in yeah. my head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Bad. how far did you get in the first show, the Bachelorette? Oh, I think it was like. 10th or I think I don't know 10th 7th I don't know I can't remember because you made it impro- I don't know if it's your accent or just maybe how you dressed or how you looked or whatever oh, it was your naughty kids on that first bro, show bro yeah <laughs> like proper no- like she goes so many walks in she's like you look like a character out of Austin Powers yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was just like their red suit these blonde hair tats <laughs> and, was, and he's fucking yeah. like you look fucking dynamite <laughs> and, just, and it was so different to the rest you know yeah, what I mean yeah which like, is so good yeah mm. that you need to be that way on, on these TV yeah, shows yeah fun. So really then good. the bas- let's talk the Bachelor in Paradise because this is where That's, I don't know if bro, you got a, went a bad the, rep from this, but like they made you out to be bro the worst rep ever. I went from the highest highs, like being like literally Australia's sweetheart to bro Australia's biggest piece of shit that ever existed. Yeah, like hates women or something like bro, that. Bro, hates vibe. all this stuff, and I was just going, what, oh, what I've actually done here? And then I started watching a bit of the show and it come out, and I just went. Oh, fucked up. Could it. you watch it back? No, nah, bro, I didn't watch it. Turn, but see, the no, thing, wait, nah, the thing with me, off. why I sympathise you, because I was like, fuck, if I was in some of those situations, how you reacted? One of the ones where, like, it was like a mate or someone you knew went with your ex, and you were like, people were like, yeah, but it's your ex, she can do what she wants. I'm like, yeah, that's fine, but, like, fucking just tell me. You're um, going to go with, I, like, one. Yeah, I, yeah. I, still say, I still would think that way <laughs> in the real world. I'm like, I don't see what's wrong with that. And then in there, they're like, this guy's a fucking crazy. He's a psycho. But, yeah. I was like, what? When you're in there, it's like... Every contestant forgets about real life. Yeah, true, true yeah, they go in a bubble. You go in a bubble, right? Yeah. You know, like yeah. you don't. You, you're not acting like you would in real life at all. <laughs> you, you know, it was funny, bro. There was this one moment. I don't know who it was. I think it was must have been like a psych or something. But she was just gunning at you, or like some old lady. You're just sitting there, just copping it. And I'm thinking, this is the worst fucking thing ever. Yeah, bro, that was awful. Yeah, well, who was that lady? So that she, was now when we had the. Um, Oh, was he not some mind reader, but he was like some li- human lie detector or yeah, something. Yeah, that, that, oh, that looked fucking painful. Bro, bro, and I'm sat and he's just fucking grill. But, and I looked and this didn't show this either. And I was thinking, how does this guy know all this about me? I was like, there's no way he can just pick. And then I went, oh, you got an earpiece in. I went, so these are telling you about it, are they? And he just went, and they went, you can't say that. And I went, well, you're obviously telling him oh. what to say. I went, oh, I already know all this. And then they didn't is, sh- is that true? Yeah, bro. Called him straight out on it. I went, you ain't a human lie detector. You got to They didn't in. put that in the final nah, cut, I bet. didn't put that in. So he was just, they were just feeding him stuff. And I was like, because I was sat there just going as red as you're fucking up, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. How does he know all this? How long has he been here? Like, what's yeah. it? Like, so how long were you on this island in Fiji? Like I that? think it was like, oh, I don't know, three and a bit weeks or something. Fuck, it's a long time, bro. Yeah, it was a I'd long time. I'd fucking implode on there. 
I, well, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how did you, like, tell me that you obviously were had that really high after The Bachelorette. Mm. So you come out of there. What was it like? Well, bro, I, the started crashing and my world turned upside down whilst I was in COVID, bro. Living by myself in Port Melbourne. Like, I had these boys to, like, chat to and, like, obviously become mates and rely on. Yeah. But, dude, my mate, housemate who I was living with, he went, I'm not staying here in COVID. Went up to his family in, like, far north Queensland. So I was just in this house, bro, by myself. Then I had a friend move in, but I was just like, this is shot. I was just, bro, wigging out at some some stuff. And then I was like, Do I, should I answer back? Should I say this? Should I say that? So I like, mm. spoke to the boys, obviously, Top and Jake. Like, yeah, give me a bit of direction through it. Yeah. And yeah, a massive to lean on, bro, because I was just, I was in a dark place. Fuck, man. Super dark place. And now place. you're like, you're settled. You got like a missus. You were just in Bali. You're That's fucking, it, bro. So yeah. you're just <laughs> okay. settling down now, Different bro. life. So are, what, you guys, are you guys now, because what, where, how old are you? Uh, 28. 20, I'm 29, you're 30. Like, I'm turning 30, yeah. I'm going through this phase. I'm going, oh, so you're 29 now. You're too. 29, bro. Right. I'm going through this <laughs> massive phase right now where it's like, I'm either bendering or I'm just, I'm changing my life. Yeah, and I'm yeah, still yeah. caught in between of which way I'm leaning here. Yeah. My, my best mate said when you turn 30, it's like a concussion, like, leaves you. You know, yeah. like, you realize what you want in life and who you are. I fucking, you know? I'm getting there, bro. I can <laughs> yeah. feel something changing and I'm fighting against it. I'm like, no, nah, just it, let take it, me back let that it, way, bro. Let it happen, Jakey. Let it happen. Bro. <laughs> let it happen. Let Happen, I'd bro. be more vendors yeah, than I'm the same as that, bro. <laughs> no, no, you said no. <laughs> Fuck I'm it the up. same. If I go out, I just I can't help myself. No, but see, so I'd rather my, just not go out. My issue, it's same with everything with me in life. It's either zero or 100. Yeah, I'm so all in, I'm either all in or nothing. So it's really positive, but it can, also can be really negative. Yeah. yeah. There's no fucking balance. I've got an addictive personality, so like I'm same. trying to stay away from yeah. partying and stuff like that. And so what, I, do you, what do you channel? Because it's funny, I spoke to a therapist about this. And like, oh, did you? Yeah, one of my issues is that I don't channel my energy into like healthy Something outlets. positive. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, like the escapism things, like mm. you channel into things that are beneficial. Mine yeah. was like soccer. Yeah. It's like 24 seconds, 24 seven soccer. After that, I've been like, whatever, like you, party, women, drugs, all that sort yeah. of stuff. But for you, what do you do now if you're if you're in a bit of better space with not going out as much? Oh, mate, I'll just put it into like positive stuff, working out, you know, like um, eating right, trying to get some sleep. Um and businesses keeps me active and yeah. mentally fit, you know? Mm. So that's good. Yeah, you just kind of put your energy into the right stuff rather than the wrong things, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Or you early, get a bird. <laughs> that helps or you settle down and get a bird. Yeah. 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 Keep, oh, keeps if you're me like on him. my toes, I'm yeah. sweet. You know what yeah. <laughs> 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 he needed someone who's going to keep him grounded, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, was it hard? Actually, good. This is a pretty interesting thing I just thought of. But for you, was it hard for you to date through those, like after those shows? Yeah. So Did you feel like people were ever dating you for the wrong reasons? Or nah. Whatever? So after after it, I just thought, you know what? I'm I'm not having a girlfriend until I'm ready. I just went. I'm clearly not ready, as you can. Every, <laughs> as Australia can yeah. see from TV. You know, it shows growth. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Probably that. Just, and then I just thought, I'm literally, I'm not dating until I'm ready. I just ain't doing it. So I was like, the whole time being a moment, bro, single the whole time, just doing my own thing, having a good time, training, working, just getting myself, bro, working on myself. And then once I was happy with my, my own life and settled in myself, I thought, right, I don't need to look to someone else to. To help. To make me happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy myself. You can, if you want to join in, this is the ride I'm going on. You either come in or you stay behind. You know what I mean? That's so great. she was like, I'm hopping on. So we're, we're, we're riding together. You oh, know what that's I'm mad. For, good, for the listeners, for anyone going through stuff like this now, what would what would be some things to like you guys did to like help yourself work? Because you've been through your trials and tribulations too. Yeah. What would, what were some things like, like medicine for you guys that helped you work on yourself? Probably getting rid of, um, bad company, you know what I mean? Yeah. More so than anything else. Um, cause those people just bring you down with them. And if you can ax them, ax them, man. Yeah. You know, just you, it's hard, it's hard for some people to do it that. Is though, hard. Cause like if you feel like a brotherhood kind of guy and you're like loyalty and stuff yeah. and fucking, it's not easy, Yeah, but it does. It's like important. It's important, man. You need to get away from them straight away. Yeah. And you might be friendless for a few years, but having a couple of friends, you know, that are your close mates, um, is worth more than having a hundred friends that yeah. are just there to have fun with you on the weekends or something like that. You yeah. Know? Cause that's yeah. what majority of friendship groups are, aren't they? Mm, just definitely. a bunch of people that meet up, do drugs and get pissed all, all yeah, weekend. Yeah. And then they don't, you, know? t- you don't talk all week. Don't it's talk like all Friday, week. Saturday. What are you doing? Like? When you need you a hand. Out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got the stuff. Fuck it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. All right. I got and nothing else to do. Dude, you, you realize that when you open up a business, man, <clears throat> you're just like, which one of my friends have supported me and helped me out? Mm. You know, like, not many people do, man. And you're like, all right, well, stuff you guys if you're not going to help me out throughout, 
this sort of period, you're not really a friend of mine, are you? What about you, study? What were things you worked on? Because you would have had fucking like so much noise around you as well. Yeah, I had, had loads. I still get it now, bro. I still get stick in my Instagram. I still, Do I, you really? Oh, I'll copy it. I've still, bro, it's not stopped. <laughs> I copy it hard every day. Do you like, know what though? I'll be yeah. honest, like, because I watched the TV shows and I didn't know you from Bar of Soap. Then I met you at the exhibition game. I'm like, bro, you're so different. Yeah. Like, it's, like, yeah. <laughs> not in the sense of like you're still that person, but like you're actually just like a very, like very nice, humble, quiet guy. Mm. Like you weren't even that loud. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they put you out like you're a fucking. But then obviously, like, when when you go on like these shows, you obviously you need need to stand out and mm. obviously be a bit of a larrikin. Be, which works in your favour. Which yeah. does it can work in your favour, can work against you. Yeah, it can do you, both. Seen. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like you can, yeah. <laughs> you can play both, both sides of the story. <laughs> yeah. You can do both. You can be the hero or the villain. It's like, which one do you want to be? Did they kind of like, when you were the painting you the villain, were they like kind of keep it going? Or they is it not like that? Because everyone kind of talks about these reality TV shows that they they kind of push you down a sort of pathway or oh, like the, they massage you into it. Yeah, do yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah. they they're trying to create fucking. Well, I was like, because they, they obviously knew at one point there's like another like female was coming into the show, and then I was shacked up with another one, and then they were going oh, and I me not even thinking it didn't happen, but they were like oh, you know you like allowed to go into the fucking little what were they bungalows or something that you had like on the beach, you had to go in there and do what you want with like the girls and that, and I was like. Oh yeah, it's like it doesn't have to be. Don't tell Sony that one. I, yeah. I was like, oh, it doesn't just have to be at night time, sort of thing. And they tried, bro, trying to make me do that because they knew like these other birds were coming in, so they wanted me to be in a room with a bird, and then the other ones. Oh, oh that's lethal, man! Up, what did you do? You go in the room? Nah, I didn't actually go in the room. <laughs> I can't remember what I did. <laughs> Might have gone for a swim. We're gonna or get you in one of these. Yeah, bro, I reckon I'd, I don't know, mate. But you know what? I've always loved to have, like wanted to go on Big Brother. Yeah, but after seeing, to be honest, it's probably in the end after all the shit you probably went through, it was probably a good outcome because now you've got this oh, bro, great you know I mean? platform, and I learned uh, learned from it. That's the best thing yeah. about it. You know what I mean? I mm. didn't. I realized that you can't just. Oh, you know, we've you can't just have your way with everyone. Yeah, and it's true. You can't manipulate and do this and that and just be a a bit of a piece of shit, really. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it ma made me mature, made me realize what I, what I did. Looking back at it, it was wrong. So yeah. I was just like, fair enough. Acted like a knob. Noted. Not going to do that again. Yeah. Lied to a few people. Not going to do that again. Because, bro, lying just gets you in that much yeah, trouble. Mate, just, you keep just yeah. funneling the web, don't you? Bro, it just keeps I, I used to be bad, bro. Did I just, you? I'd lie to anyone. Compulsive. Like, Couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help it. It wasn't me. It was Not someone else. It come out, well. and it'll come out and I'd go, why did I do that? You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit. But now, bro, just, just blunt. As it is, the easiest way. Mm. Right. Like, some people say, oh, you asshole. Yeah. But it's like, well, you can think that, but I've just... At least you know what he's thinking. I'm telling yeah. you I'm right. telling you straight now, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, instead of trying to make everyone happy, trying to just like bullshit around, oh, this, that, and the other. And then you're thinking, fuck, I've, I've lied to that person, lied to that person, and I didn't actually fuck, want to do man, any of this. It's hard to keep you know up what I mean? as well, eh? Crazy, yeah. bro. And then you just fucking get called out on it, and that's yeah. it. Game yeah. over. When you live by the when you live by the honest truth, you start to feel like the hard truth. You start to feel better, bro. Yeah, even life, though it's hard. That fuck, life you, is. Oh, it's like getting something a million times better. Yeah, 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 you, yeah know? you feel better <laughs> too. Speaking of getting off, you don't have any weight on you either. Look, I, I um I measured how many calories I burnt just from training people during a day, and I think from like four day, I burnt like twenty five hundred calories from just walking around, and then after that, I'll finish off the day by having my own workout, and um I'll intermittent fast pretty much all day, so really? and then eat big when I get home. What about when you were modelling? What was that like from an eating perspective? Because I feel like you know, no one eats. Very similar, but in different countries, you need to be di like certain weight. You know what I mean? So like France, you had to be like if you're six foot one and a half. Something like that. You have to be like 67 kilos, Fuck. which was way too thin for me. And I was hovering around like 70 kilos in Italy and stuff like that. But then you got different variations, but yeah, you'd ha you have to stay pretty lean because you need to have perfect measurements for that that high-end clothing and stuff. Is that a relief that you don't have to do that as oh, much anymore? Oh, shit, yeah, man. Because like, that's what I find with boxing. Like when people cut weight, that's like, like for people, it, it seems like the world's hardest thing, it's which a, must be awful. It's the hardest thing about boxing. Yeah. You know, oh, obviously the technical aspect, but losing the weight and, you know, being at your perfect ideal weight for that weight division is bloody hard, yeah. you know, and not too many fighters get that right here in Australia. 
in America, you could be fighting a guy who's six foot six, but he can fight at 60, 66 kilos. It's like, yeah. or 69 kilos or something like that. It's like, whoa. That's They're fucked. doing a weight right over there. We're doing it wrong. Right. You know, because no one gets a weight Have right. Have you cut in. weight before? Because you would have done. Like, no, nah, I'm, really. I'm skinny. I don't even yeah. cut weight. Do you, do you I, need put, I need to try and yeah, buy, eat that much food. Just do you? Whatever. Well? well, whatever. Oh, no, I'll diet. Like me, bro. Yeah. I'll, I'll still I'll eat clean, eat healthy. But you just eat as much but as well. Eat, eat whatever I want. You know what I mean? If I want to eat a meal, I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. Right. Um, okay. There's no, I don't have no diet. Just eat, eat clean though. I don't eat crap food. I yeah. think being in the gym all day keeps you active. But bro, you doing know, PTs was... all day, like I'm training as mm. I'm training people. Like you're dripping with sweat. You're, yeah. you're knackered. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Now let's actually talk about this because we got probably some listeners here that I do a lot of content on athletes and I assume some go to the gym, but some probably don't. They want to get going to the gym. What's a piece of advice to, or motivation we can give some of our listeners to get going, get active? What's the benefits you see from them? persevering and getting that first session in or whatever in 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 a boxing gym you say boxing gym gym in general exercising um it's, it's a lot to do with mental health like working at a boxing gym um you have people come from all sorts of life and a lot of them do come from you know hard hard upbringings or they've gone through a situation and it's been hard for them to get out of that mindset um my me myself boxing helped me out with depression and stuff like that early on yeah um so yeah, things like that, man. It just you, you just focus on what you're doing. If you're doing focus pads, you're just focusing on one thing and you're forgetting about everything else, you know? And yeah. I tell all our clients, once you walk through those doors, forget about whatever is happening in the outside world and just focus on what you're doing here. Fuck, so do you get like a kick out of doing that with people 100%, now? Like that's your feel good Oh, bro, it changed that many people's yeah. lives in the yeah. gym. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you guys are like helping like the same. Right, I had a client mm. come in, she, oh, she like 180 kilos mm. or something. Bro, got her down to like 110 joking just yeah. ch- and bro and she was like, like that, man. glowing she's like going on dates with guys now yeah. she's like yeah. doing this stuff where she was like show me pictures from like a transformation <laughs> and stuff and I'm like fuck it I was like because I see you all the time I don't really see it yeah 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 when, so you, she, when you like, see it you're like you actually you're, you're changing your life for the better you're getting healthy you know everything happening bro and it, it takes it, it takes mint. a strong person at that weight to lose that sort of weight yeah you know what man. I'm saying like it's hard, man, to move that body. I find it hard for heavy. people in that situation. If you don't have a goal, like if you don't have an end goal, it's very hard to channel into something. Like you exactly. can't just go every day and then you need you back. need you need to set a goal. And we yeah. ask our clients like, "What's your goal from being at a boxing gym?" Yeah. And as soon as they tell us, we know what journey to give them. Okay. You know what I mean? So, obviously, that client for him was weight loss. You know, so you know, you change lives. Little by little at the gym every day. So it's, or it's some of them just come in, just want to have a chat. You know what I mean? They just yeah. You guys are like part time therapists too. Yeah. Well, that's what I feel like. Some PTs the do. They'll well. come in and just yeah, you warm coach, up. You'll yeah. talk. They're on the treadmill. Only just they've had a crap day or a crap week, and they just come in, just need a deload. Mm. Do like thirty seconds of pads, and they go. Oh, Thanks for that. I'm like, well, no problem. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean, like I'm buzzing. That's all you need to do is have a chat. You need to just unload whatever was in your mind mm. to me. Yeah, no issue. And then that's good sit there out. I'll talk about it for a, as long as you want some of them will come in you know what I mean you can see someone's bothering them they might get upset and go oh, we'll, just, we'll go for a walk go for a walk bro they just clear it and they feel a million dollars they come in they mm. just shine yep yeah, sweet thanks ready and you're just like what sweet the fuck, so you don't know what's going on in their life but they might tell you a part of it and then we're just like yep yeah, sweet and if we see a client who we know or oh, that's not looking too great we'll Bro, like the weakest links that you call them, mate, you'd go straight to them. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, dude. just yeah. Say, Are you all right? Like, we'll chat to you straight away. You come in our gym, bro. We'll treat you like family. Dude, like, crazy, I've man. I've got a few kid clients who've got autism, and like seeing them change their lives and you know open up to yeah. us and just start being able to communicate a lot better than they used to. A lot more confident. Like, it changed your life just that's as much the as thing there, actually you know? with it's a really good point with um combat sports it's like a confidence of like mm, when you start what you start to notice when you can start to fight uh, yep. or like you know you're getting confidence in like a, an environment like this when you walk into other environments that maybe you'd have been bullied or mm. you know you didn't feel as confident you notice a difference Definitely. Like, I can fucking pop anyone in here if I want to. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean well, when you start to really you're like I feel a bit more confident look, in here I've, I've I've been in a couple of situations when I was modeling in Milan where I've had two uh, guys try to rob me on the way home from the airport, and um, I had to self defend myself. <laughs> Liam, you went all Liam Neeson. I went Liam Neeson. On that, <laughs> you are, that we'll bitch, find you. Know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to take everything I had and like literally pulled out a, a pocket knife on me, and I just thought, holy shit, I have to fight. Fight him. or flight. Like, and I'm in another country. I might be sent to jail or something. 
But um, lucky there was a copper at the the next stop, and I told them what happened. Both were on the floor. So but wait, how did you get out, get out of the situation? Did you leg it or you fucking? Oh, as went? soon as, as soon as I chinned them both, I just grabbed my shit and then just <laughs> went to, went to the other side of the train. Obviously, where more people were because I was in um, right. a carriage with just me, and these guys were walking <clears> up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah, and then they stopped and sat right next to me. I'm like, oh fuck, oh. Jesus Christ, bro. Yeah. That's full on. So, now, we, I don't want to promote like partying and stuff because I'm trying to cut down myself over here. But <laughs> I assume in the modeling industry and over here from Bachelorette and Holy Bachelorette moly. in Paradise, there's been a few fucking, Oof. few scenes a you guys have been to. Yeah. So can you guys just together or individually, like what what is the best party you've ever been to and why? Oh, and wow. and you know, give you a moment to think of because I'm sure there's been fucking lots <laughs> through this yeah. period. An international model, I mean, surely, Brayden, you'd think they would have a, the odd shin dig here and there. <laughs> <laughs> From the watch Kieran told us, he, he was rocking up to shows and needing 18 hours of sleep before he could start. <laughs> I can share this one. I went to a, a party and um, it was all fully masked. You can't you can't take your phone out. They put like a little sticker on the back of your phone camera and stuff like that. And um, yeah, we got pretty pissed and there was all sorts of celebrities down there. Um, and then, yeah, I got super smashed and then ended up at some diamond, uh, a lady who owned a diamond company. And um, the next day she's like, oh, like I'll pay you 10,000 US a week if you want to be my boy toy. <laughs> I'm like, how did I end up in this situation, man? What? Like, so had the party finished and she's asking The party was done. This is like the next morning Next day after. you've woken yeah. up just yeah. like, where work, am I? Yeah, I'm like, where, where are you in the world at this point? Uh, in America. Oh, and I'm just on, like, bro. I'd have, I'd have signed that paper. Bro, quick, bro. <laughs> with, in a heartbeat. <laughs> with in a heartbeat. <laughs> I can't even the US, bro. <laughs> yeah, you like, can't <laughs> And there he is. He's like, I did sign it. I'm <laughs> like, can you Western Union that shit? Do <laughs> <laughs> so I have to oh pay tax? God, bro. <laughs> everyone there was like of super wealth and stuff how like old that. Was, how so old was she? Was she young? Was nah, she, she was like a 45-year-old billionaire woman. Or oh, I can't remember. Yeah. So she had a diamond company. Fuck me. Yeah. Bro, that's you. I'd have been walking around iced up, bro. Yeah, bro. iced up. Like, how'd you get that? Don't worry about it. Bro. Don't story. worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. What about you? You got any that you can oh, share from? Oh, I, not on that level. I, I won't get enough of ten grand a week. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, but you would have had US. like, like even a, even on <laughs> yeah, US. like sixteen k. This guy, the exchange rate back then was more too. <laughs> yeah, it was like seventy cents a dollar. Yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> because you would have had the, the what amazed me is those parties on the shows that you could drink that long. That's fucked up. Yeah, now. Nah, was, I thought they would have tried to control that more. Nah, not really, because they obviously want. They try to. They want to get the. You uh, work your way around it, I think. The material, you know what I mean. They yeah. want to get the footage. You want people to say things that they'll regret in the morning when they yeah, wake yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Fuck. You man. want people waking up in someone's bed that they don't know whose bed they're in. You know what I mean? I used to do that stuff. So. Fair enough. Yeah, it's about. No, I don't do it anymore. You, know you what change then, right? That's yeah. it. If I go out a party now, and my party's done by what one a.m. or something. Oh yeah, we're Easy. we're out we're out pretty early. There, That's so. good, man. So you got the self the self eject button. Bro, I've got to do it, man. I find that. Where... I've got my hot misses oh, at home you know, in bed. I'm <laughs> yeah, bro. Think you look at that, Steve. Nah, I need the to bot. get home. Yeah, see you later, boys. I'm out. Yeah, fuck, <laughs> we're just ghosting now. Like ghosted. if we're at a venue, we just ghost. Do you know what? It's it's interesting. You mentioned the thing when you have a business. When you have big nights out, it's fucking hard to operate. And, oh. you know, and you need to operate at full function. And if you guys are getting up that early, and too. at this tender well, age of thirty, four a.m. I'm coming yeah, in. Yeah. You, can't, you can't do it anymore, bro. It takes you four or five days to recover. Oh you know? man. Well, so let's just pro let's pump this up for Ellis Boxing. So because you guys, for anyone listening, how can how can they contact you guys to become you know obviously work with you? Be personal. Instagram's probably the best. Bet. Instagram, oh, we're, Instagram. We're on Google as well. You can you can hit us up through there. Um, give the gym a, a phone call and what people get is a seven day free trial straight away and a 15 minute free PT and um, and yeah just give the gym a crack and, and see if boxing's for you really mate and awesome we, we find that a lot of you know retired athletes like ourselves um, boxing is usually the sport <laughs> To, like yeah, I was gold. <laughs> I was going to say retired models, but we'll go with that. <laughs> they, they, they find boxing something that they prefer after they stop playing sport. So yeah, we've had true, guys man. like Clay Smith, you know, footy players. Taylor Harris is another one. Um, Nelson Solomoni plays for Melbourne Storm. He's interested in having a fight potentially in the future. Bro, and, he's um, a big he's a beast. He, beat, he beat him he sounds, in a 20-meter sprint. He sounds big. I was, I was training with him once. It was me and him getting trained by a Thai. And I was like, oh, yeah, sweet. And then Ty's like, yeah, bro, I'll do all this and do sprints. And I was like, boom, took off. <laughs> bro, I didn't know a bit. And I just, after it, he's like, <laughs> blitzed me, bro. Yeah. I was stunned. Oh. And I just he's, went, he, he's like, yeah, bro. I went, 
Fucking hell, like, you look slow <laughs> as fuck on TV. <laughs> I was like, how quick are other blokes? Uh, you know yeah, what I mean? The guys rapid. who actually look fast on yeah, TV. Yeah, like they, and shit. Bro, they grinding. must be rapid. Because I looked yeah. at Nelson and sort of thought, oh, you'd never catch me, bro. He, he put, One stride was like 10 of mine. Gone. He was just gone. Bro. Oh, and it's a it's mountain. Pure power, isn't it? A mountain running next to so me. I was like, he, he, he does it, his pre-season at the gym. Like when I wouldn't want to get hit by him, bro. Bro, imagine oh. him running that quick and tackling someone, man. bro. You want to? Yeah. Kill Rugby's on the heavy us. bag, yeah, wait, yeah. bro. When he hits the heavy bag, it like it it bends. You know what I mean? Oh. It just, boom, when we, get him to, we get him to break in the bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's an animal, bro. That guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, so man. nice, bro. Such a sweet gentleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Absolute nice. gentleman. He could he could honestty be an Australian heavyweight champ, bro. If you really that could he, he's no, that good. Yeah. Do you see people just like to just come in the come in the gym? They just want to come like for boxing. They're like this guy could actually go if they really. Yeah, man. Training. Especially especially the younger teens and and kids. Sometimes you see some serious attributes of a good boxer mm. and. And, and the know, build of them as well. The build know. of them, they just have natural understanding of the sport for some reason. Do you, know? you do you watch much UFC? Because you're obviously in the boxing, or is it more you just pure, like a boxing purist? When um when Conor McGregor started making a bit of a name for himself, Jakey was calling him to be the next Muhammad Ali of the UFC, and he was calling this ages and ages ago, and um like before the Aldo fight kind of yeah, thing, way before that, bro. In. Yeah, saw saw his his pedigree and what he was doing to guys and. Yeah, call that one, but yeah, not not really, man. They they've had um a bit of controversy around how much they pay fighters and stuff like that. And remember, yeah. if you're fighting in four rounds gloves, <sighs> do you want your kid to you know go into UFC fighting? No, nah, I couldn't. You know? Paddy Paddy Pimblet, the guy would take the piss out. Oh, I, I, love, I fucking love Paddy. Fucking Paddy, 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 the pro game for the boys as well if they want to get paid oh, even more I'll money jump, already. I'll do it, bro. Yeah, I'll, I'll, bro if I'm making right. money more yeah. than Paddy the Sinner, bit, yeah, bro. See, yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna, uh, guys, we're gonna fight Logan Paul, or spar Logan Paul for a Hitmonchan Pokemon card. Yeah, because we deal Pokemon. So we got cards. a Pokemon card, right? There's only three of them in the world, and it's a uh, no rarity one, like no rarity, Japanese, yeah. like before, like first edition and whatnot, isn't it? Uh, it was before that, 95, wasn't it? Or was that a 96 one? Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, so this, there's only three of them in the world. And I hit him up and I was like, bro, you want to spar for a, a card? And he's like, how how tall are you? And I was like, bro, send him my height and weight. And he's just thinking, bro. Oh, we were sending I'm somebody in there to get two, knocked out. But I was going in there to get my head <laughs> clean taken just, off. You, so you wanted to lose the card just for... But like, I wasn't asked about the card. I was like... We just wanted the marketing. Yeah, the marketing, in the YouTube. Welcome Stranger was putting up the card. And, and <laughs> bro, we put up we put up Stoddy to... And going in there and get knocked out. They were like, bro, we're feeding you to the lion. And I went, feed me, boys. I'm going in. <laughs> Not asked. And, bro, we were going to do it out of um, Fortune's like boxing Fortune gym. gym in America because he's a good friend of mine. Right. And he was, bro, keen as trip. Then COVID, we couldn't get there. But then I messaged him bro, probably about a month or so ago to do like his prime, chatting to him. Mm. Sent him, because my mate did a tattoo of him on this guy. So I sent him that and he's like, bro, that's sick. And I was like, yeah, I still got that card if you're keen. He's like, well, whenever you come to America, bring that card, we'll do it. And I was like, yeah, sweet. Oh my God. So wait, are you following each other or what? You just nah, don't follow me. Just the dog. Of, he talks uh, to me, but he so don't it's follow the me. It's blue tick life, right? It's just his blue tick life. Yeah. life, bro. He doesn't get him requests. That He'll actually open through. his yeah. messages, but not mine. So, what But uh, yeah, fuck? so it's still still on. I, I'd try and put a bit, get on the juice. I think they hit my chairs a lot more expensive now. So we might give him a shit of card for that. Yeah. But can you talk to me about this? Because I don't really know. Too, I mean, I know about like well, NFTs and crypto, but I'm not too much into like cards and the trading aspect uh, of it. So Aaron Ellis and Jake Ellis in our group have always been buying Pokemon cards for probably the last 10 years. And um, I'm pretty sure Jakey bought a Charizard first edition card for like 2100 and now it's worth half a million US. Mm. So he got all the rest of us since went and it was crazy because I sold study his first ever card and he thought like... What were you thinking when, but, I, when so, I offered it to you? This is when I just started working <laughs> in the gym. Like, I had like two hours of work here a week or something. Like just basic. Bro, yeah. brand new. Yeah, still like on probation. <laughs>
and I had about three and a half grand in my account. And these lads were all talking about the Pokemon like for the like couple of months. And then Top goes, I'm selling a card. And I was like, oh yeah. And he's like, yeah, this Charizard, blah, blah, three grand. And I went, I was like, like 500 left in the kitty. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I was like, wow, I've got a food rent. <laughs> I went, yeah, well, all right, fuck it, I'll buy it. <laughs> and he's gone, sure. And I went, looking at my account, going, <coughs> fuck it, you guys are making bank on this one. Yeah, fuck it, whatever. Bought the card and then like waited for a bit, bro. The next time he showed me the price of it, the card had shot up to like 27,000 US. Fuck and he's it, like, there you go, bro. And I went, Nah, and then I just kept buying stuff off him, bro. When I started obviously working, <laughs> what getting the money. What's going on in this guy? Why are you selling them? You're brilliant. Oh, he's here, he's bro. Jake and Aaron are feeding me all the cards that they'd buy. So oh, I was just right. buying whatever. But, and then, but the funny thing is, bro, Pokemon Jake, Mafia, bro. Yeah, bro Jake bought that card for $70. Seventy dollars, bro. Gave it to him. He sold it for three grand. I've got it, and now it's worth tw- like twenty five thousand. <laughs> oh, yeah. that is. Uh, I was just about to say, poor guy's ripping you, and then it's like, oh, actually, hey, he's ripped himself. Yeah, pay, it, pay it for. But it's just, I mean? it's just how it works, bro. You know what I mean? And the boys have looked after me with all this Pokemon stuff because I'm still new to it, still learning. And then because I had the Charizard, which is the hardest one out of any Hollows really to get, because it's usually the most expensive. And then Jake went, oh, why don't you just try and complete a set? And I went, oh, yeah, right, then go on. And he's like, I've seen these um, ungraded cards. So these ungraded means just the card, yeah? Fresh out of the, well, not even fresh out of the pack, but out of the pack, mm. just a bit of cardboard. Right. Bro, these cards are from 1996 that some geezers had, right? Just wow. kept some safe or whatever. Jake's looks and he goes, oh, he wants a grand for them. What do you reckon? And I'm just thinking, cards are a bit older. I went, these boys grade cards. I went, yeah, whatever, fuck it. And he went, you might be lucky to get a 10. Might be lucky to get a nine. He went, but don't count tank. on it. It's okay. a risk. Okay. So I get the card, bro. I've not looked at these cards. I give Jake the money. Jake's got the cards, sent them off to PSA, like in America to get graded. And I waited nearly 12 months. And I asked like probably once or twice. And he's like, oh, I'll come and they come. Eh, no problem. I'm on the Bachelorette Sweden in Greece. Right. So in the middle of a pandemic, I'm sat there in Greece and they ring me and they go, your cards are back, your cards are back. And I'm like, Oh, sick. And I went, do you want us to open them? I went, yeah, who got this? So I'm on FaceTime, bro. I'm not even there to see my cards <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. The lads are opening them. Sent 14 cards in. Nine of them, or 10 of them, came back 10, like the best grade you can get. And the other ones were PSA 9, which is the like, second best grade you can get, bro. So they're all legit. And the boys just went, this is the best grade, like, this is the best result of grading we've ever had. Like, you... You're never going to want to grade again. If you grade again, you're going to be so disappointed. (laughs) Oh, my God. You made like, you would have made like 30 grand off. 30, 40 grand or something. Just boom, straight away. That's off a thousand dollars. What? And a gamble. So is it, is it, is this kind of like, is it similar to property where like it'll always go up or is it like crypto where like these, these cards dip in value? Like what's the sort of Oh bro, if it's a dip in value, it's nowhere near as much as like your no. cryptos so, have just dropped so 80%. So like, for instance, yeah. Jake's got a card that's worth half a million. Is yeah. there a risk for him to hold that long term? Is it worth selling or like, cause oh, or would value always keep it. rising? It'll just keep going up and up. Really? That's, that's just what they're doing. Look at basketball cards and you yeah. know, um, uh, NHL cards and all that sort of stuff. They keep going up. You know, and it's a tangible asset, so it's not something that's digital. Like I, had, I still haven't bought nothing. No NFTs, no crypto. Yeah, neither. Yeah. I had a mate who just oh, lost bro. like fifty grand, or you know, <laughs> yeah, on some NFTs of my mates or something. Pig, yeah, bro. It's, fuck, bro. it's big money, hundreds and of thousands. And the yeah, good thing with the fucked. Pokemon card, with basketball cards and sports cards in general, um, you have to worry about their season, how they are, and if they stuff up in real life, the you know the price will go down. Pokemon cards, yeah. You know, well, they don't, Pikachu they don't ain't gonna go out and call someone something, and yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah, what the fuck? Charizard ain't you know? gonna go burn someone's house down. But is it just limited amounts of these cards, yes. or is yeah. it so? Is or is it the rarity, like the ones that have been the around rarity? Longer? So they got they got a pop report on it. So okay. like Study said with the Hitmonchan, they had a pop of three. So, so it's like a supply and demand kind so of thing. That means thing. There's that's three of that card in that grade in the world that's and we've got one of them and that's Logan it. Paul's got the other nah Logan Paul won't have one he wants this one Logan, yeah, Logan right. Paul just bought a card worth seven and a half million it's like the, the illustrator yeah, it's like illustrator. the best card you the can get because yeah. they were given out in Japan to like the winners of like the Pokemon competitions people who were playing with the cards and then they went oh you've won here's the card and there's like 25 of them or something mm. oh my gosh and yeah, there's not, not one in a 10 he's got one he's nine. got one it's a Is 10, it a 10 or a 9 I'm pretty sure it's yeah. a 10 what a business, mate. Yeah. Insane, bro. And See, now, this is all running in the back of the gym when the gym shut this yeah, fucking we, Pokemon. Yeah, we, we, we do, hey, we do live auctions. <laughs> we're hustling, bro. Man, was was fucking, bro. We, do live, we do live auctions on Sundays. I so. told you I felt a weird vibe when I walked yeah, in, man. It was Sundays, fucking, there was a lot bro. going on. It wasn't just the temperature. <laughs> yeah, welcome stranger <laughs> we never stop working. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome yeah. stranger clicks Sundays, live yeah. at 5pm, bro. Yeah. And they're just, 
selling yeah. Pokemon cards and people, you, it, bro, you got to be in quick to try and buy these cards, bro. Really? They're just going straight Yeah, away. they're selling like hotcakes, bro. Man, what a yeah. We're going to have to check this out, bro. We're going to have to buy one maybe for the show. Yeah, yeah get well, one. We'll we'll get it, bro. We'll start putting them up in. Yeah, yeah <laughs> seriously, bro. That's it, 100%. Yeah, we'll have to do one for sure. Well, boys, I can't thank you enough for the show, man, honestly. Nah, thanks, Jason. I love bro, what you guys bro. are about. It was great to meet you a month ago and, man, this has been been fun. We're going to have some good clips from this, I reckon. Yeah, sure. sure. And yeah, <laughs> this is a great podcast and um, I can't wait to see where you go with the Jake. Yeah, thanks, is, man. Is We're going to the man. moon, bro. That's, That's the plan. Let's yeah. take it as far as I'm we can. I'm a flat earther, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're in a firmament, bro. Yeah. I've been on TikTok. I've been getting in the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, boys, honestly, thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate it, Jakey. Awesome. Cheers, bro. Much love, brother.